Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Thank you for stopping by today. I'm assuming you saw drugstore makeup and I didn't even realize I was going to do drugstore makeup, all drugstore makeup, to create this very simple beginner look until I was like almost towards the end and I looked back at my product and I grabbed all drugstore for us today. I wanted to take this opportunity today. I'm just sitting home, I'm sheltering at home like you probably are. I know makeup isn't the most important thing with what's going on in the world, but if you're bored and you're at home and maybe you've got something you're looking forward to this summer, a wedding or a special event that you thought maybe you would wear makeup, just play with me today. Go grab a couple things. I'll show you the products at the end. You can go to the end first and then come back to the beginning if you want to grab everything or recreate it after the fact. But today I'm going to take some drugstore products, keep it really simple, and create this look. So if that's at all interesting to you, keep watching because that's what we're up to. Okay, so I'm ready to get started. And first up, first thing we all need for sure is moisturizer. And I am using this Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel. And I'm going to apply that all over, get it under my eyes. Do I look blue? <laughs> Let that sit for just a second. And then I'm going to use a primer, which really isn't necessary, but this one is not expensive. It's from NYX, it's called Hydra Touch, and it's just another layer of some hydration, which can never hurt us at our age. And then I'm just gonna take a little pea size amount, also blue, I may be onto a trend here. And this I'm really only gonna put in the center of my face, but around my mouth, near my nose, and on my nose, right where I have pores that I'd like to hope that these sort of fill in. I could actually take my beauty blender. Today I'm going to use my Wet n Wild. Golden Beige is the color I use. This is their um, Photo Focus. My new thing to keep things very simple and for someone who's a beginner, you do not need a whole face of foundation as a mask covering everything. You just want a little something to even out your skin tone. So now that we're hydrated, let's just take, this one has a little spatula applicator, but really just in the center of the face. So chin around the whole center here. And then I'm gonna take a brush, a Morphe brush, and it's like a little flat brush. It's very, very dense, so it won't suck up a lot of the product and waste it. And I'm just gonna take this and blend right from the center. Not taking it up close to my eyes because I'm gonna put some concealer there. I'm trying today to not make all of my usual funny faces for you. And we'll blend that out through the forehead up into the hairline, to my ears, down my neck with whatever's left over on the brush. I still have some redness around my nose and some darkness around my eyes, and we will tend to that. I feel like that's pretty well blended. And for the concealer, we're going to use the Age Rewind from Maybelline, and I like to put that in a few places. One, because I have deep set eyes, I get a little darkness where it looks like it recedes a little much right into the corners. And then we'll do it right where I get dark spots or dark shadows here. I like to do like the outside corner where sometimes I get a little redness. And right here, because I have an area there that seems to be thinning with a little less fat on my face as I age. So we'll put that there. And a couple more spots since we're going crazy. This is beginners, but it's only one product. so on my chin because I have a smaller chin, have a larger forehead, and then a little bit down the center of my nose, which will make the bridge of my nose appear as if it's coming forward and maybe make my nose look a little bit thinner. We'll take this brush here and we'll just blend down the nose a little, pat that in with a brush, pat that in with a brush. What's left here, I'm kind of creating a, a little bit of a triangle shape as I blend. What's in the inner corner, I'll just pull that across my lid, what's left on my brush. But I'll just bring that down into a little triangle shape and up here. And that's our concealer. 
Next up, I'm going to take a little highlighter. This one is a butter highlighter from Physicians Formula. The color on this one is Pink Rose, and it looks like that. It is pink. It's a Japanese brush. And I'm going to take some of that on here and put it on the high points of my cheeks. This is not a necessary step, but it will give you a lot of bang for your buck. Right along the top of this bone here, just make a little bit of a stripe right on both sides. That one actually didn't even show, so let's do it again right here. You can wrap this around a little bit if you want in a C. I'm going to put some things over this, so even if it's a little bright, it'll be fine. So the highlighter brings things forward as well. So it'll make my cheekbones look as if they protrude a little bit more so that they're a little bit higher. But also, we, there are certain parts of our face we want to look like they're receding. So for that purpose, we are going to use bronzer. And I'm going to use my Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. And it looks like that. And it smells like this. Hmm. <laughs> And I'm going to take this brush here, it's a Sonia Kashuk brush. I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to put it right in my cheekbone on the bottom half of my cheekbone, right where I get a little bit of an indentation. If you were to do this face, you'd be able to see where that line is for sure. I'm going to put some there on that side. At the very bottom of my cheekbone here, we're going to blend that out. I'm going to take a regular fluffy brush of, this is a nothing brush. And also, I'm going to put some bronzer to warm up my face around the perimeter. So that would be along my hairline. I'm not going to go back over this area, which is where I was already trying to make that appear to be a little wider. But then I can blend this upward onto the actual cheekbone. I don't know what this little discoloration is there today. Who knows? And then I like to take it where you might have a bit of a double chin or a little extra flesh there, a little extra flesh there, <laughs> whatever's left over along the jawline and down the neck. And as long as this brush has a little bit of the bronzer on it, I'm going to take it right down the sides of my nose and onto the tip of my nose and blend that down the sides of my nose. And I'll going over all of that with powder so it'll mute itself out. Then we need a little blush. I'm gonna use Flower Beauty, which is the Drew Barrymore brand. This one looks like this, and it's called Peach Primrose. And for the blush, I'm going to use this Real Techniques brush, which is called their Expert Face Brush. That was a tongue twister for me. I had to try it a few times and delete out the silly ones. <laughs> I tap into that. And this is going to go between the highlighter here and the bronzer here, right along the top of the cheekbone, right there. And then as I blend it, in a moment, you will see that it's going to kind of touch upon both of those. So I'm going up over the highlighter and down a little bit over the bronzer, bringing it a little forward onto the apples of the cheek, which is that little ball part. I'm going to bring it up a little bit this way, but not to where I have the highlighter there and the concealer. And then a little bit across the bridge of my nose. Next up, I have this little tiny angled brush, which if you've seen any of my tutorials, you know I don't know what it's called, but it is a MAC brush. It's their tiniest angled brush that's just the thinnest. I'm going to use this Revolution Focus and Fix. The top is already off. The brow shadows themselves look, look like that. And I'm going to take the lightest color, which is this one here, and I'm going to fill in my tails of my brows a little bit. Following that from that arch, coming downward on an angle where the hairs go. I'm going to just take that and extend it a little bit. And then with that same color, I'm going to go in any bare spots I have. A little bare spot right there, right at the front of the brow. Could use a little extra. Brush through it again with my little toothbrush. If I were taking this to the next level, not beginner, I would put something on that to make it hold. You can use hairspray or you can use a brow setter product, but those will be fine and natural looking. 
And let's do my eyes. Today we're going to use this e.l.f. palette that I picked up from the drugstore. It's a very neutral palette called Mad for Matte. And it has all your basic neutral tones from a dark chocolate brown to a white cream, peach brown, reddish browns, neutrals. So I'm going to take a flat brush, just wiping it off. The brushes are not perfectly clean. This brush here, I'm pretty sure it's a Morphe brush. I don't know how those people who do makeup tutorials all the time keep the numbers on their brushes because I have no idea what this one is, but it is a very flat brush that you would use to pat shadow onto your eyelid. And for this one, I'm going to use as my all over color, just to start with and keep it simple, this first one here, pat it on my eyelid and go up into the crease with it should kind of just brighten my eye up a little bit. So I'm putting it on the mobile lid and then here's my crease right here, here and above it, not taking it all the way to my eyebrow. I'm leaving a small area that's got no product and I'm kind of creating an area right here where it looks like it stops from the corner of my eye to my brow. That's kind of the area that I'm filling in with this color. See, so it'd be right here, down here. There you go. I'm going to take a fluffier brush now. This is my new favorite blending brush. It's a Carity E30 that I picked up at CVS. And I love it because it's fluffy and it is very, very soft. And you could tell, but it takes on a nice amount of powder and will make this next part really, really easy. So I'm going to go right next to the one with a gouge, which is right in the middle here. And it is this one right here. Right there, that's the one I'm gonna take. <laughs> it is sort of a, it's not a reddish brown like the one next to it, and it's not a pinky brown like the one on the other side. So this one seems to be the most neutral. And where I'm going to place this, because we wanna create a little depth to my eye. We have a nice amount on the lid, which is going into light color, which will make that area look as if it's coming forward. So in order to make this part of my eye, which is getting a little bit older and heavier, I want that area to recede. So I'm going to take this color and I'm going to go right into that crease there, right here. I'm just going to stop there instead of blending and do the same thing on the other side, right into that crease. And now I'm going to wipe my brush off because I don't want to blend any more color from that point. I want to blend what's already there. So I'm wiping that off on a tissue and then I'm going to go back in and do a little bit of back and forth motions. Not adding any more product, just moving around what I put there. Going back and forth from the inner corner to the outer corner, but not extending beyond that imaginary line that I'm envisioning that's doing that. Do the same thing on the other eye. Not coming up to the brow, I'm leaving a little bit of area. Really, if you can feel that area right where your brow bone is, it almost helps you guide your brush back and forth if you just stay up against that bone. I'm gonna take a little pencil brush here. I think this is another Sonia Kashuk based on the little curvy thing, and it looks like a pencil at the tip. And I'm gonna put this into that same color that we used on the crease, and I'm gonna go right under my lashes, close to my lash line, not making that come down very far, but just a little bit of definition so it looks like a shadow from my lashes. But I'm also going to bring that up to attach it to where that shadow was that we did put in the crease. So right up close to the lashes, not all the way into the corner, but from where the lashes pretty much start and lead it back up into that shadow in the crease. Another fluffy brush that's clean that has no product on it and then just go right over where that shadow is meeting my skin right in there and see if I can blend that out so there's no harsh lines and that works nicely. Next off I'm going to use the eyelash curler. I think it's really important to curl your eyelashes if you want your eyes to look bright and alert and like you're wide awake. I know it looks like a, a scary contraption, but once you've done it, once you've pinched yourself once, you will never do that again. So I'm going to just drop my eyelashes into it, close to my lid, but not so close that I pinch myself. And I'm just gonna squeeze it a few times. 
There's a lot of different ways that they recommend you do this as far as walking it up your lashes. I don't really like the way that ends up looking on me or holding it as I had suggested at one point, like this was is actually the correct way. You're supposed to do that. But I don't really like the way it bends my lashes. Just a couple little squeezes. And that opens up your eyes already. Honestly, on days that I don't wear any makeup, I'll still put on some tinted chapstick or lip gloss and I will curl my eyelashes and I could be out the door. But most days I do curl my eyelashes if I'm gonna be going anywhere. Get Big Lashes Volume Boost by Essence. Essence is now, well, Essence has been one of my favorite mascara companies and I used to pick it up at Ulta, but they are now at my CVS. So this is a new one I picked up that I've never had before. And we're gonna use that to coat my lashes. Actually, this does help to keep your mirror below you so you don't bump into your lids or your above your crease area. So I'm going to use it to coat my lashes and also to separate them so that they don't clump together. And on the second coat, I'll do a little directing the brush to create a shape to, oh, did I just touch my cheekbone? I think I did. Leave it alone. That's the, there's a trick for that. Just leave it forever and walk around like that all day. <laughs> no, it'll scrape right off once it dries. I like to turn my arm around so that the little tiny part of the brush gets into those smaller little hairs close to this corner of my eye, closer to my nose. That would be our first coat. Be very careful so I don't touch my cheek. A little coating on those bottom lashes too. Everything will benefit from a second coat, but let that start to settle just for a minute. While we're doing that, let's go back and powder the areas that I would like to not have any shine. And for that, I'm going to use my Milani Prep Set and Glow. This is 02. There is a one that's white looking. This may have a teeny weeny bit of tint to it. And I'm going to use this brush here. What is this? Who are you? I have no idea. Got it. Who knows where? So I'm going to pat it to this. I'm going to make sure that there are no creases under my eye where I had my concealer. And then I'm going to just touch it down my nose and then touch it to where I had that concealer. I get oily here, so I'm going to touch it there. Going back into my powder, do my chin. The center of my face where I get shiny. And then I take it here just because I don't want too much of a highlighter for an everyday simple look. We'll go back to the mascara now second coat you can do as many coats as you want i mean sometimes i feel that for an evening i think three would be the minimum but during the day i like two for a simple look i still like two honestly some days i think i put on a ton of mascara and i go out somebody takes my photo and i'm like why aren't i wearing any mascara today maybe it's because we're getting used to seeing women on tv with false lashes on all the time i don't know but I'll think they look nice like that. And then, I don't know, a couple hours later, it looks like I have nothing on. Okay, quick little tip. I'm going back into my brush. I'm not going to pump it because I don't want to do, introduce any air or bacteria into the tube, but I do want to rub up against the sides of the tube to grab some product on the brush. And then I can a little bit more on the product to coat those lashes. And then what I like to do a little bit is to direct those lashes by sort of leaning them as I sweep through them out towards that outer corner from the middle outward. I like to bring them a little bit into a cat eye shape. Next up we do our lips and that should really do it. I'm looking through all of my lip colors, trying to find something that goes nicely with my peachy blush. I think we'll do a little combo here. I'm going to use this Revlon Matte Ink Super Stay in the color is Lover. And then just quickly, I'm going to go over my lips and I'm gonna to touch this up with a color to make it less pink. Almost lining my lips with the point. 
And then I'm going to take this Stay Satin liquid lip color from Rimmel. And it looks like that. It's a little more beigey, so it'll tone down this pink. And I think, let me take a let me take a look. All right, we've got some hair. That would be a basic look for me. A little bit of everything, not going crazy. I haven't used 12 colors on my eyes, but we did use a highlighter and a bronzer, very simple. And I think this would be a nice beginner kit as well because we've used all drugstore products. We used the e.l.f. palette for my eyes. We used a Milani for our powder. We used an Essence Mascara. We used two drugstore lipsticks. We used the Revolution for my eyebrows, and that is from Ulta, very reasonable, but I actually picked mine up at TJ Maxx for like $2.50. You may not have been paying attention, but I was using all drugstore. Wet n Wild for our foundation, Maybelline for our concealer, two products from Physicians Formula that I picked up at CVS, Flower Beauty for the blush is available at Walmart, the moisturizer from Neutrogena and the NYX primer are both from my CVS. Those were all the products I used to come up with this look. Very basic, not super fancy, just great for going out during the day. During the day, if anything wanted to touch up, you can take your powder with you and your lip color and be on the go and you'll be fine till evening. I don't do a big spray thing or powdering everything. This is just a pretty simple, basic look that I think uh, I'm thinking of a couple of friends who don't use makeup often. I think that they would definitely be able to do this, so I'm sure you can as well. I want to check to make sure I don't have lipstick on my teeth before I smile. Always check your rear view mirror before you get out of your car. <laughs> If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you'll subscribe. Sometimes it's makeup, sometimes it's fashion or different things about beauty or food. And also because I'm a dating coach and a matchmaker, lots of times we talk about relationships and dating. So if any of that is interesting, stop back again so we can hang out. Until next time though, have a good one.